Good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone. Welcome back to the Oak Island Research Channel with a new video, an exciting one. It's going to be a long one, so you may want to watch it in several parts, closing it. And I think it's one of the most revealing ones so far with the understanding on how the map works. I think I found something very, very significant. So, um, fair use on YouTube as usual, even though I'm not going to use anybody's book. This is, uh, we're going to have another approach than using the book. Sorry about the quality of the sound. I'm changing my devices, and at the moment it's the best I can offer for sound. And one more thing, I've noticed throughout the month that uh, it's not that I'm jealous or it's not about competition, but I see that that does get much more exposure uh, from the YouTube channels, and we came to the conclusion that it's probably due to the fact I'm broadcasting from France and my IP is recognized by YouTube as an overseas IP. And uh, uh, it, it, dot to dot is American, and you've got an American IP making it much more likable to be picked up by the uh, YouTube engine, we believe. So if you're watching my videos often on a regular basis and you didn't subscribe yet, it's not for the money, it's for the exposure. And so that those theories and messages can be spread out through YouTube, please don't hesitate to subscribe. Again, I, I, it's not for the money. I'm not even at the threshold of making any money. It's more, it's more to reinforce uh, our exposure with Michael. Okay, where did we leave it last time? Last time, we leave it with a possible connection between Seborga, which seems to be maybe the headquarter of the Templars Library, where all the artifacts, all the memories, all the documents from the travel landed in Seborga and was maybe, that was the topic of our last video, uh, moved to Cremona um, because this document that is, is supposed to have landed originally uh, in, in Seborga, which is one year to remember that journey to the Americas, was bought out by Bill Jackson in Cremona. And there's a kind of a long story of uh, Cremona and Gustav uh, Benevento was uh, a descendant from the Sforza family who hired Leonardo da Vinci. If you want to know more, just check my former video, which you probably did already. Okay, so we're going to start from now, from there, and we're going to look at Seborga, because if in chronologies, Cremona came after Seborga in the sequence of even, what was before Seborga? And before Seborga, there was the Lerins Island. In 1954, the Count of Ventimiglia ceded the Thief of Seborga, the Thief of Seborga, to the abbots of Lerins, who made it an ecclesiastic principality to last for 800 years. This is Seborga right here. Ventimiglia, which is the border, that's the border between France and Italy, and Menton, Monaco, uh, nice, which is a major city there, when you go down south, you've got uh, Antibes, a lot of British people know about it from vacation, and you got Cannes with the famous film festival, and right underneath, about 10, 12, 15 miles, you've got those two islands that are the islands of Lerins. And to be true, I, didn't, I knew them from tourism, but I never knew I would revisit them under an Oak Island venue. So. These are the two islands composing the Lerin Islands, the St. Marguerite Island and the St. Honora, which is going to be of great interest to us. That's that's St. Honora. I don't know if we pronounce it in English, Honora. And this island's got an abbey, a fortress on the south. So we've got the, <clears throat> the abbey is here. We got a fortress that was built uh, later to protect the island from several invasions. They built uh, the Monk Harbor on top here, north, north, of course, north, south, like this. They got chapels and a very nice little island. Some pictures of the abbey, abbey here, beautiful. And you can see the scenery. This is the Riviera. And on the other side of the island, you've got that massive castle uh, to protect 
the island. It's a monk castle. It was defended by monks. What do we know about this abbey of Saint Honora? Actually, it's it's it should be there. So the abbey itself is Saint Honora. So it's a Cistercian monastery, and Cistercians have had some interaction and influence with the Templars, our friends. Uh, it's an active monastic community. It's been a monastic community since the fifth century. I mean, you can find abbeys and such things for monks and all over France and Europe, but that's pretty old. That's very old. That's like a root one. The construction of the current monastery began around, so uh, the, the, there was a community for 500 years before they built the monastery. It was inhabited by Saint Honoratus, that's the name, Honorat, disciple of local hermits, around the year 410, very old. During the 5th, 6th, and 7th century, the influence exerted by the abbey was considerable. I read that in several reports, that this abbey was um, kind of a training center where, where, where very important characters of Christianity came and trained and learned, um, such as St. Patrick, uh, such as St. Quinidus, which I didn't know about and I don't know his life, but it's, there's a lot. So this Abbey of Saint Honora is an old established, probably um, <clears throat> uh, influencers of their time about how to deal with the religion. And again, it was they were they inherited they, they were given the whole principality Seborga uh, for what reason? Why them? Let's, let's discover more about this interesting island that's going to be more and more interesting for our business. In the abbey, the brothers, the monk, had this painting fixed on the end side of their restaurant room or where they had their dinner and lunch. It is not La Seine by Leonardo da Vinci, it's La Seine by Pita, which was installed there in 1900s. It's recent. But it's interesting to see they didn't pick or choose any painting randomly. They picked La Seine from Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci, who later, uh, well, not later, earlier, this, this was fixed in 1900s, um, was acquainted with uh, Ludovic Forza and uh, and, and the whole story as you saw in my last video. So very interesting coincidence that on this abbey, on this island, there is La Seine, which is a copy from the original Leonardo da Vinci. Of course, they couldn't put their hands on the original one. So the abbey was formed in the fourth century. Very interesting, very, I, I find it striking. The pilgrims who went there on the island between Ascension and Pentecost to receive they would receive the same indulgences as they had gone to Jerusalem. Okay, pilgrimage was very important in the time, and you had to go, uh, I mean, the, the Muslims still do it, and once in your lifetime, you have to go uh, to the Mecca. And it was the same for the Christian. You had to go to Jerusalem and pay a visit to your ancestry of, of religion, and Jesus' place where you get crucified and, and all this. But if you made it to this island, and there was a strange um, process, they would embark at the tip of the peninsula of Cannes, where there was a small cross, a croisset, a croisette, which is now the most famous walk, walking place in, in Cannes, and therefore the name of the famous boulevard. Arriving on the island, they would do the tour barefoot, stopping at its seven chapels. What would be so important in that island, in that abbey of Saint Honora, that would guarantee the same privileges, indulgences, of a pilgrim who would have gone all the way to Jerusalem and back in the days where it was dangerous and you would risk your life going there. They would, I, I believe, but that's just speculation, there was something kept on the island, a relic, a relic, a relic or an artifact that was so powerful that you would need to go to Jerusalem. What would you need to go to Jerusalem for? To, to pay, um, to pay um, visits, and that's not the right word, but to, 
to propose yourself to Jesus, the place he was, he was, he, he was he died during the Passion, he died. I won't finish my sentence and my idea. Yeah, I think you get what I mean. So that's for that's for the pilgrimage. That's very particular. So on this side, you get a pilgrimage that's as powerful as the one in Jerusalem. And the monks in the 1900s set a painting of La Seine, the Seine of Leonardo da Vinci, accompanied by the painter Pita, uh, in their dining room. And one of our use, one of my followers is French, Chico Casa from Toulouse, and we talk several times. He makes lots of comments in my video and wrote a couple of emails in French, so you couldn't maybe read what was there. And he's the one suggested. It, we were talking about the last video, and, he, and I'm gonna quick translate what he said. He said, "Yeah, good old Leonard, but uh, did he go to Saint? He went to Saint Honora, didn't he? And when he wrote that, I didn't know what Saint Honora was." Uh, and I told him because of the scene painted in the in the monk uh, restaurant. Uh, I told him no, it's Peter who painted in 1900s. And even Chico is is surprised. The Abbey of Saint Honoré, you mean? Like yeah, it's uh, I mean, it's strange to find La Seine in, a, in such a place. Uh, this Abbey uh, to which Seborga belonged to. Um, blah blah. Chico says, for me, Castrum Sepulchre, which is uh, uh, Seborga, was St. Honora, where the Templars brought the relic and the parchments and the scrolls that were discovered. I, I believe in it. And this is the last sentence that started all. Oh, thank you, Chico. He says, about St. Honora, it would be interesting to study the location of the seven chapels on the island. Some work for that to dot. And again, two weeks ago, I didn't know about this island. Now there's seven chapels on it. So I didn't bother that to that. Sorry, Michael, I did, the, I did the work. I did the homework. And what I discover is, to me, outstanding. So that's the island. And we're looking for seven chapels. And when you look on Google Earth today, you find one chapel, two chapels, three chapels, and the abbey. And voila. So first of all, I was like, maybe Chico's wrong. And there's, there's not seven chapels, there's only four. Where are the hidden? hidden? Where are the other ones hidden? I went into the archive of the city of Cannes and found this very interesting drawing of the island of St. Honorat, upside down. I don't know why. I really don't know why they put north bottom. But at least we can read it. Uh, these are the chapels. The Trinity Chapel, the St. Cyprian and St. Justin Chapel, the St. Michel, St. Sauber, St. Capres, I don't know what those things. St. Peter, our good old Peter from the Triangle of Peter, he's got a chapel on the island. And St. Dorset. Okay, this is the fortified monastery, the tower you would see on the picture, and that's the abbey here. All right? And one of the chapels is inside the wall of the abbey. So here are seven chapels, and I use the, uh, I, I, I can locate them on this old map, but of course on this one you only find four, I'll show you. I reversed the map upside down, so now north is up top, so I can do comparison and matching, because I'm going to use this map. Little flashback. We're flashbacking to our good old Oak Island, and this is the basic um, locomotive in drawing, if you wish. That's, that's the fundamentals of the island. What you find here between this, and if you carry on this way, that's the east-west line. That's the there line that Michael uh, brilliantly shows in, the last, in, the, in his last video. So that, that's your east-west line going all the way if you follow this video, that way is Round Island, right in the middle. Okay, and this is Nolan's Cross, right here, stuff in here, and right there. Okay, so that design, which actually I'm going to paint in, I'm going to use another color, bear with me. I'm going to put a, a good yellow wish. So we have Nolan's Cross, maybe. Nolan's Cross is here. 
we get the east-west line, sorry about the drawing, and we get that line that's of some interest, we see why. Okay, so that's our drawing. And in, in a past video, I'm, I'm showing this here, right? I'm highlighting those uh, segments of importance for our demonstration. Because in video number 13, I explained that while studying some of Leonardo da Vinci's paintings, and one was of particular interest to me, which was the Virgin of the Rock, falling on the, landing on the Wikipedia page of the Virgin of the Rock, was showing an analysis from the Museum of Louvre. I didn't draw that, they drew that, showing the composition of the drawing. And of course, it struck, it struck me that the angles, the motive, the geometry, we have, and I, that's why I use those colors to reflect the Wikipedia page coloring system. So I, I had a very strong intuition feeling sentiment that Davency, this was not done by chance, that angle relationship, ratio relationship, length to width, things like that. But let's go back to Saint Honor. The first thing I did is I connected the two chapels that were the most extreme on the island, the most outer chapels. And believe it or not, when I first read it, I read 90 degrees and I was just dying. Well, it's 91. There's one degree from the pure east-west line, but it really looks like a set east-west line. This island is, the, the, is exactly positioned on an east-west line axis up to one degree. When they built the chapel, <clears throat> that was 1,600 years ago. So were they wrong in their measurements and they wanted to have the equinox line, east-west line? Were they wrong by one degree? Did the earth move in 18, oh, 1,600 years by one degree in its axis? I don't know, but I, I don't consider this is too bad of an error. This is 0.3%. So we have an east-west line set. Well, if we have an east-west line set, what do you think I tried to do? I tried to use it as my east-west line and see if I could position node and cross on this island. Of course I did. So let's move. <coughs> Taking the drawing, which gets much more uh, information since we've got all the chapels represented. So we get the east-west line, right, from the center of each of the outer chapels. And the first line I considered then was this one, going from the chapel of Saint Michel, which disappeared, only ruins now, to the chapel of Saint Dorquer. And I put a P, but it's a D, Dorquer. So can we have pictures of these? That's Saint Dorquer. So Saint Dorquer, Saint Dorquer, sorry. Saint Dorquer at the bottom is located inside the walls of the abbey. And according to this drawing is next to the wall here, the south wall of the Abbey. So let's have a look. That's my outer Abbey wall. That's my south wall. And I think that's the church we're looking for. So I got the church on the visual on Google Earth. The Saint Michel, I told you, is in ruin and destroyed. You cannot see it from a Google Earth point of view, but I found a picture of the remains of it. And yes, I'm missing a, sorry, I'm missing a slide. Let's see if I'm wrong when I reorganize my slide. There we go. So that's it for my Saint Michel to Saint Docker line. The second line I want to use is the, this one, which goes from Saint Cyprien and Saint Justin Chapel here, and all the way, and that's where I've got a little problem and I'm gonna show you what the problem is. So the second line, this is, this is the, this one here I'm gonna show first. And we're looking for a chapel. Originally, I think it was this, but this turns to be somebody's house. You got a car here, and that's a modern roof shape. So that's not the chapel. This is a welcoming center for pilgrims, so that's not what we're looking for. What we're looking for actually is here. That's the chapel, little chapel right next to stuck to the wall. And uh, contrarily, and you see where you start to have little discrepancies, here the chapel is not stuck to it. It's, 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 
kind of far apart. I don't think the accuracy is great on this, but we can use it still. And the other church, the St. Peter Church, is here. And you see a thing here. So St. Peter Chapel here, rebuilt in 1497. So the original build was around 500 or 550 uh, after Jesus Christ, modern times, right? And it got destroyed at least three times from what I read. Uh, rebuilt in 1497, redestroyed by the Spanish in 1693, restored in 1963, etc., etc. So this is the chapel, and this took me some time to locate what it was exactly. This is here the statue of Saint Peter with Jesus, holding Jesus. And from my, um, I, I suspect that either the church was here, the chapel, and that's where they erected the statue. Or the chapel was indeed in that area, but the statue, why did they put it there? Because it locates perfectly for our next, for our next picture. If I use here, so I'm going to use here the side of the, uh, uh, of the, of the uh, uh, welcoming center for the pilgrim. And here, no, I'm not going to hit the Saint Pierre. I'm going to hit the, the status of Saint Pierre, not, not the chapel. It, it somewhat, somehow it works better. Works better for what? Okay, I made a small approximation here on this one. I agree. I may have two degrees off. But the rest is kind of steady. And what I find here, I find again the exact same pattern. Let me browse back and forth for you. You see it? I, th I think it's incredible. You get the east-west line established on this island. And from the location of the church, you could almost position an autumn cross there. And you, you can see the number of, of, of lines significantly. This, by the way, this angle here is 90 degrees. They made this church, that church, this church, that statue, I say, or the old location of the church that we lost in 1600 years, they make it cross at 90 degrees. And when you get those set up with the east-west line, you definitely locate your signature because that's how I call it now. So let's rewind a bit. This old, old, old monk community that dates from the fifth century, one of the oldest, oldest, one of the most influential in the sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth century. A monastic school that trained one of the greatest Catholic or Christian philosophers at the time, or people of influence. Those monks inherit from Seborga in 1954, right before the Templar story started. They, according to the leg, to what we read, they almost the legend. They made Seborga the headquarter of the Templar. That's where the Templar story started, and that's where. As soon as there's a Templar even, it, it ends up on this, on this island, and they inherited from it. And now we got a year to remember. Somebody goes, uh, Templars go to the Amer America in 18, um, sorry, in, in 1180, roughly. <clears throat> and when they come back from a one-year extraordinary journey, so I'm going to Mars, March and, Mars and coming back. They go straight to Seborga. And... Seborga's documents are found in Cremona 500 years later in a church that was built by Leonardo da Vinci's employer's father. Do we have a, do we have a line there? Do we have something that could, could be true? Because I reported the same geographic here on the island. I found it so peculiar, the position of those two chapels on the east-west line. So interesting. And now we don't have two coincidences. We have three. We have Oak Island. We have Leonardo da Vinci, the Virgin of the Rock. And by the way, I found other Leonardo da Vinci paintings that reveal the same geometry. And that will be my next video. Very interesting also. He didn't do it on only one painting, he did on several. And the island 
from maybe everything started from as a matter of symbolism or knowledge, secret knowledge, maybe. This is why I now believe, I'm convinced, this is what I call the signature. Nolan Cross, the East-West line, and the other line here, on the right-hand side here, this one, that, that you find that you find systematically the blue line here. It represents the base of the triangle, and it's one of our uh, side branch. And they only represent the one on the right-hand side. And I noticed to myself, if, you, if you're Christian, I was born Christian, but I don't go to church much anymore. How do you sign yourself? Uh, in France, but I think it's the same in the world. You go from the father, you go down and you sign yourself to the son, the père, the fils, the Holy Spirit. Amen. This looks like the geometry of somebody signing himself. That's how we say in French, and much, or crossing himself in English. When you do that, that, that obedience from father to son to the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit, amen, you, you go through that, you do that with your hands. That's exactly uh, the path. So is it linked? I don't know, but this is very, very, very interesting that on three occasions we find the same pattern, the same signature, and there may be a link between the three of them through the story of St. Monora Island influencing Europeans, religious, or some of them, inheriting from Seborga, and that's where you get the connection to Oak Island, if it's a Templar connection. And those documents that landed in Seborga eventually landed in Cremona, Cremona being next to Milano, where Leonardo da Vinci operated, and his employer is the son of the one who built the church where all those documents of this landed. What a story. Yes, take care. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe again to boost the channel. I think we got <laughs> found something there. I don't know. So many more things to check. Uh, check more uh, Leonardo da Vinci painting. Uh, go more in the history of, of St. Honorat. Why bloody hell did they put the scene from da Vinci on the island? What's that story about that pilgrimage that's worth as much as a pilgrimage to Jerusalem? That's because it's crazy. What was on the island that was that we forgot and that was so interesting. Thanks for watching. You guys enjoy your Christmas season and I talk to you with new videos probably around Leonardo da Vinci very soon. Thank you. Bye bye.